just when you thought the Wallflower series was over, bam, you're hit with a special surprise, a Christmas surprise, a Wallflower Christmas, in fact. Hi, my name's Bee, and welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance, because nobody in this book is going to hand me this when I ask for the remote. Well, it's Christmas in July. That's right, the ladies are back for one final book that focuses on all four of them at once. As we know, those of you that have read the Hathaways of the Ravenel series, we do get to see them again in different books, but this is the last one where they're really all together for an entire book. And we also get to see Lillian and Daisy's older brother, who's really the focus of this one, Rafe Bowman, or should I say Rake Bowman? And I say that because the man's a mess. This guy, he's definitely a rogue and he is in need of some reformation. I really am looking forward to seeing how they can help him find the woman of his dreams who may not be who he thinks it's going to be. I'm going to be reading this all week long. I'm gonna be vlogging it. So after this point, there are going to be some spoilers, but I will tell you, I'm very excited to be sharing it with you this week. I'm going to also rate this book. I'm also going to tell you what I believe the love theme for this couple should be. And I cannot wait. So so let's get started. Whew. I don't know if Mondays where we have camp are easier or harder than Mondays when we don't have summer camp. I had all three of them all day kept him busy, but man, were we doing everything. We had treasure hunts, we had special lunch, we did yoga with cosmic yoga. It's Hungry Caterpillar Week, and so it's all things food, including, but I'm still finding time to enjoy a Wallflower's Christmas. Now, Daisy is currently with her husband in Bristol in her beautiful home that she has made just to her liking with shelves and shelves of books. But we do have Annabelle and Evie who are trying to help Lillian with a tree skirt that she destroyed as she was <laughs> trying to sew and lost her patience. They're getting the house ready for Christmas and everybody's gonna be joining them. Evie is newly pregnant as we saw at the end of Daisy's book, Scandal in Spring. Isabel, uh, Annabelle's daughter. I don't think I saw her. Maybe she was taking a nap during this part, but we do see baby Merritt with, with Lillian and it's just so dear. They're talking all about Rafe. That's Lillian and Daisy's older brother who has really got a bad reputation, but they're hopeful that his betrothal to Lady Natalie is going to help. Lady Natalie's family needs the money. And so they have an idea. They really want to make sure that Rafe can get this gal. And so the way they're going to do it, they've asked that her companion, Hannah, who happens to be her cousin, to come for tea. And the plan is they're going to do some recon. They're gonna ask Hannah a bunch of questions about Natalie's likes and dislikes so Rafe can take notes basically and then win Natalie's heart. The problem is Rafe finds himself insanely attracted to Hannah and Hannah finds Rafe obnoxious. So <laughs> it's off to a rip roaring start. Okay, so I just finished chapter five. Rafe says goodbye to Hannah in the front hall and they're alone. He goes, he goes to give her like a little peck on the lips just to mess with her. And then all of a sudden passion takes over. Their mutual chemistry is so strong. They share an incredible kiss and then she gets really irritated and then he kisses her again. And there is no denying that there is something going on between Hannah and Rafe. And you know what's funny too is I love his line where he says, this is how we court women in America. We kiss them and they can't argue with us. <laughs> I just thought that was great. He's funny. He's a funny kind of guy. Then she gets, she gets back to Natalie and Hannah says, look, this guy's the worst. She does tell Natalie that she kissed him but she says that it was terrible. Natalie explains to Hannah that she is no angel, that she's done plenty of kissing because Hannah has been a terrible chaperone. And Natalie is very intrigued and she's a little immature. Hannah's very like supportive of, of Natalie. She defends her in her own mind because she's aware that Hannah or that Natalie is a little bit shallow and immature in what she's interested in. And Natalie's excited about Rafe's looks, his prowess and his money. So that's a little unfortunate. So you get the sense that Natalie is not maybe wanting Rafe for the right reasons, but so she really doesn't care if Rafe is a great guy or not. She really doesn't. So anyway, we fast forward just a bit. We get to Stony Cross Park at Christmas time. Oh, 
perfection. Stony Cross Park is beautiful enough, but picture it at Christmas. Everything is decorated. They arrive and Hannah refers to Rafe as just a stunner in his trim suit. And he's just, he's talking everybody up. He's very poised in a group, but he does find ways to sneak back and talk to Hannah. And he's hoping to get some time with her and she is brushing him off. So that's the end of chapter five. We will see what happens next. And when Hannah finally sort of succumbs to Rafe's charms again. <laughs> I just finished chapter eight. Okay, so a couple things about this section that drive me crazy. And it's literally the only thing I remembered about this book from the last time I read it. We're in Stony Cross Park. It's Christmas time. Hannah's waking up there for the first morning and she's going out. She's having some breakfast on the back terrace. And who shows up but Rafe? And he asks if he can walk with her, but she has a teacup. And she says, well, let me just put the teacup away really fast before we go out. I don't want anybody to have to clean up after me. He takes the teacup and dangles it over the edge of the terrace and drops it and it breaks, it shatters. And he's like, oh, they got plenty of other teacups. That is such a brat move. And when he did that, it totally ruined my opinion of him because I, I get like some people are in these books, they're damaged. And so they make bad decisions because they didn't have the right information or maybe they were not feeling well, or maybe they were just hurt, you know, or they're, they're flawed in some way and it, it, like anger, you know, there's certain things that can cause people to make the wrong choices. But for like dropping a teacup when you, it would take like two seconds to do the right thing or just leaving it, it just seemed like, it reminds me of when they say, if you wanna know how somebody is, like their personality, watch how they treat the wait staff at a restaurant, for example. And this is like that. He just seemed like a total brat. And then he wasn't really much better when they were walking through the winter garden. She's talking about how she doesn't feel like he would be a good match for Natalie. And then he says like, well, maybe I could make you my mistress. And then he pulls her close to him and he wants her to kiss him. And then she does because she cannot deny her attraction to him. Like it's beyond all reason. And she realizes this and she's kicking herself for doing it. And she's just so furious with him. And he, and he asks after this incredibly passionate kiss, do you want me to apologize? And she goes, no, because I know that you're not going to mean it. So anyway, not loving him. And he's also been fighting with his dad about, you know, who he's going to marry and how much of the, the company he's going to inherit afterwards. Of course, of course, Matthew Swift is going to be getting a great deal of it. He's the only person that Thomas Bowman really likes anyway. And the other part of this that drives me crazy is, okay, so Daisy and Matthew finally arrive and Lillian and Evie and Annabelle are all decorating the Christmas tree, which is just so fun and festive. But yeah, when Matthew arrives, there's something in that they say before he gets to speak that his Irish heritage shows up in his features. And so Mary Jane Wells, the narrator, works off of that and gives Matthew an Irish accent when he's from Boston. And she did his accent as a New York Boston hybrid accent in the last book. But you know, I can't expect her to remember every book she's ever narrated because it's a lot. But still, it's like, come on, he's from America. He's not Irish. And now he's got an Irish, like a full blown Irish accent. Every time he speaks for the rest of the book, it just throws me off. <laughs> I apologize for having things on my shirt, but you know, hashtag motherhood, I guess. It's summer and it's evening and this is the only time I have to film before I forget what I read today. <laughs> so I'm doing it right now. I love how the flowers in my wallflower shirt match the flowers behind me. Anyway, so I've neglected to mention somebody else has come to Stony Cross Park recently and that is Edward Travers. He is madly in love with Natalie and he doesn't want Natalie to be with Rafe. And of course, neither does Hannah. Not because Hannah's interested in Rafe, but because Hannah just believes that Rafe is the worst. Now. Rafe and Natalie are hitting it off at dinner and everybody's watching. <laughs> 
but the one who's the most upset, of course, is Edward. And Hannah feels really badly for him. So after dinner, Natalie decides that she wants to kiss Rafe. She doesn't want to marry him if she hasn't even seen that he can kiss. So she's hoping that Hannah will just go off. And Hannah's like, no, I'm not going to leave you alone with him because that, he's, he's a cad. This is a terrible idea. And then Natalie proceeds to complain and complain about Hannah to Rafe. And Rafe sort of defends Hannah, honestly. And then once Hannah finally leaves, Rafe doesn't even give in to Natalie. She's hoping that he's going to kiss her. And he's like, well, you know, let's just go back. And he discovers Hannah in a chair in a cozy library with little children all around her listening with rapt attention to Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which of course in this time period was written two years before. And it is just such a cozy, sweet little scene and picturing Rafe, he's leaning against the mantle, just watching her. And he realizes that what he feels for her is far beyond just the physical. He feels a real soul deep connection to Hannah. And he actually thinks he wishes that Hannah and Natalie were switched so that he could marry Hannah, which is so crazy. Speaking of crazy, the next scene, which I just love, Hannah is walking around the next day and there's basically nobody there at Stony Cross Park. Everybody's off doing other activities and a little boy has taken a slingshot along with Thomas Bowman's hairpiece and, and he slingshot it into the Christmas tree, which was up really high. So Hannah decides to help him and then the ladder falls and the little boy has already left by this point. So she is stuck up on a ledge next to the Christmas tree and who should happen upon her? Of course, Rafe. And he saves her. He pulls her down. And of course, them being so close together and smelling each other's sweet smells. <laughs> uh, he, she notices that he smells like peppermint because they've been making uh, peppermint candies for Christmas in the kitchen. He had some of the broken bits. They're just so charmed by one another. But you can see that they're obviously holding back because they all both have their reasons. But we'll see what happens. Man, has it been a long week. It's Friday night. I just finished chapter 11 and oh my gosh, it's getting so good. So they're decorating the Christmas tree. Everybody's there except for Simon Hunt and Sebastian who's with his dad who's not doing well. But everybody else is there and they're decorating the tree and they start singing and then they decide that Hannah should try to sing. Oh, and Hannah was even nervous about decorating the tree with them because she just didn't feel like she was as good as they were or whatever. But Lillian insisted and she just started getting along with everybody right away. And she started singing, God rest you merry gentlemen. And Rafe listened to her vo sweet voice and he realized that he couldn't, he can't have her, but he can't not have her is what he said. And it's like, it just like, breaks your heart. We fast forward to the next morning. A lot of people are out on sleigh rides and having all kinds of Christmas fun. And she gets a, um, Hannah gets a letter. So she goes into the library by herself. There's like nobody still there at the mansion. And she's in the library in front of the fire reading by herself. It's a letter from Samuel Clark. Now we haven't talked about Samuel Clark yet. He is someone who she sort of works for some of the time. He's an intellectual and they have a lot of great conversations, but she's sort of like his secretary. And in this letter, he's telling her all these scientific things, many of which he doesn't understand. She doesn't understand, but he also says that he would like for her to be his wife. Well, she thought she'd be happy about this, but she really got a sinking feeling. And Rafe comes into the library. He's another one of the very few that stayed behind and notices her expression. And so they start talking and he grabs the letter and he's like, this isn't, this isn't a marriage proposal. It's a science report. And he's like, you would never be happy with him. And she's just so upset. And she's acting like, oh, cause I'm plain and poor that I'm not good enough for him. And he's like, you're better than everybody. And then of course they start really making out and it gets hot and heavy to the point where he's got her on the floor. Passion is flaring up. He is pleasuring her. And he asks her point blank, would, would you like this to be me? And she says, yes. There's a little more to it though, but you know, this is just a YouTube video, so I'm not gonna go there. Enjoy the book if you'd like. <laughs> anyway, it's good, is my point. So he then leaves as quickly as he can because even though Hannah has gotten her fill of pleasure, he has not. And he tells her flat out, like, I can't touch you even to help you get dressed again because if I touch you again, you're gonna be unclothed. 
pretty quickly. So he hightails it out of there. Also, this is really hilarious. At the end of the Christmas tree decorating, Simon Hunt arrives and he tells everybody that he needs to talk to Annabelle about something. And everybody knows that they're gonna be doing more than just talking. <laughs> it's, it's pretty hilarious. Rafe says, oh, I'm sure they're gonna be chatting up a storm and Lillian elbows him really hard. And I just think about the dynamic between Lillian and Rafe and it just must be very exciting all the time. Also, this is really cool. Daisy tells Evie that Matthew encouraged Daisy to write a book and she's already 100 pages in. So Daisy could be a published author soon, which would be so perfect considering her love for books. I forgot something huge. Okay, I'm to I'm so sorry. This was like one of the most key pieces of the book and I completely forgot it from my last segment. So Hannah sings while they're decorating the Christmas tree. I know I told you that already, but then Rafe was supposed to sing and he didn't want to, so he had to do a forfeit. So his forfeit was a little tin soldier that was in his pocket that he gave to Hannah. And Lillian pulls Hannah aside after this and says, and she's like almost crying, Lillian is. She says, look, that was not insignificant what he did, that he gave you that tin soldier. He's carried it around forever. The significance of it is his, Rafe's father has basically been riding him his whole life. He's been way too hard on poor Rafe, which is I think why Rafe has rebelled as much as he has. And he carries this tin soldier, which was one of the only toys left after his dad tried to get rid of all of them so that Rafe could focus on his studies. Rafe carries this around as like a piece of his heart and a piece that wasn't broken. And he gave it to Hannah. And I think that's another reason why Hannah gave in to passion in the library, because she realized he's much deeper than meets the eye and that he obviously feels an incredible connection with her and she feels it too. So I can't believe I totally forgot to mention that. I'm just gonna blame sleep deprivation on that. So I apologize. So anyway, moving on, we find out that I know I mentioned at the beginning of chapter 11 that Daisy was telling Evie that she's making writing a story and it was so cute because Daisy says oh you know and of course it's going to be naughty <laughs> which I thought was so cute but then it gets way better Evie goes and takes a bath and who arrives in the room but Sebastian Lord St. Vincent. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole book. I love it when they say the maid who was going to warm the bed, she was going to get a, a bed warmer. And she said, and, and uh, he says, of course, he's like, well, she doesn't need a bed warmer anymore because that's my job. Oh, and like the lines that happen as he's like making love to her, how he takes her velvet robe off and then her body is is clad in firelight and freckles or something like that. It's, she says it better, but oh my gosh, it's just so good. It's so good. He is so amazing. And I thought it was interesting that with, it just shows you like one, what the public thinks and two, how Lisa Kleypas might also feel because Sam, Simon Hunt, when he pulls Annabelle away, we just find out that he's going to take her away. But when Sebastian goes to make love to Evie, it's written about. You're, you're, you get to know what happens. But I don't think people are as interested in Simon and Annabelle. Oh well. Also, this is hilarious. Hannah is so emotional. She's not sure what to do. After a letter is found, it was in the fire and Rafe thought that he had burned it all the way. He's staying in the bachelor's house, which of course we remember from Again the Magic, that's where Gideon Shaw stayed and where Daisy and Matthew had some fun in the book Scandal in Spring. So now we're back in the bachelor's quarters or bachelor's house with Rafe. He's, he's just burned the letter or the night before. Anyway, so a maid finds it and she's bringing it around. And that letter is one of the most powerful things I think I've ever read by Lisa Kleypas. It's what he says to her and he knows she's never going to read it, but he just pours his heart and soul into how much he loves her and how it's happened in such a short breath of such a short span of time, but it doesn't even matter. He says he will always feel this way. He obviously soul deep feels this way for her and it's not just physical, although he does mention some great stuff. So Hannah's really dismayed. She's not sure what to do because she loves him too, but he's supposed to be with Natalie and Natalie wants to marry him. 
And according to Hannah, he wants to marry Natalie. So she's wandering around the, the mansion and Lillian finds her and pulls her in and says, tell me everything. So Hannah goes and tells her everything. And then Daisy shows up and then Lillian fills in Daisy. And then, and then Annabelle shows up and Evie shows up and they're all there together. And now they all know what's going on in terms of how Hannah's feeling about Rafe. And it was just such a cute scene. <laughs> I loved it. So, and I love how they're having tea with Brandy. And Evie says, I'll take my tea without Brandy. And Annabelle goes, I'll take my Brandy without tea. <laughs> just so cute. But you're just in hopes. And I, I love, love, love how they refer to Hannah as an honorary wallflower, which was just so perfect. So at, the more I read this book a second time, the more I enjoy it. I just finished a wallflower Christmas and I loved it so much. I think I might read it again this Christmas. Oh my gosh, I forgot how good this was. Lots of high emotion in the end. Lillian sees Marcus with Lady Kittredge and she is jealous. She believes that he is getting ready to start an affair, which is not uncommon in this day and age. She tells him that she's very upset by all the attention that he's giving to her and he then responds just he's flabbergasted and he takes her out to the stables to show her that he was talking to Lady Kittredge over her Christmas present which was a gray Arabian mare that looks silver and he had to move heaven and earth to get her this horse and it had nothing to do with him liking Lady Kittredge she's just a horse breeder and yeah so she felt much better. Lillian felt much better, but Marcus said he needed to teach her a lesson about how much he loved her. And they proceed to have a very amorous time in the stables in front of the horses. <laughs> it was great fun. And yeah, it was hilarious and very passionate. So there's your second love scene in the book. Then we get to Hannah and they are doing her up. They, she looks so gorgeous at the Christmas ball and she's just so excited. So they go to the ball and they announce that Natalie is going to get engaged. And of course she assumes that this is to Rafe. So she leaves just in a panic before they can announce the engagement. And she, she's falling apart, but who's there to catch her? Rafe. And he lets her know that actually Natalie's going to be marry, marrying Lord Travers, which is just phenomenal. They're so happy. And finally, Lord Travers does kiss Natalie and she says it was worth the wait. <laughs> so Hannah and Rafe said they just, they are going to get married. They love one another so much and they can't wait to be together. So they head back to the bachelor's house and they proceed to have one of the most tender love scenes that I have read ever. He's so, so gentle and wonderful with her. And it's just lovely, just beautifully written. And then the next morning, Matthew Swift with his Irish accent shows up to the door and says, you better marry her because we're all talking in the house. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're not Irish. <laughs> But anyway, they decide that they are going to do that. And then there's an epilogue where they just, everything gets tied up with a beautiful bow. We find out that Evie has had a baby and she's got red hair. We know that's going to be Phoebe, who we will be seeing in the Ravenel's books. And also we, uh, Daisy has her book published and it's a huge hit. And Rafe and uh, Hannah, they get married at the end of January, but they decide that their real anniversary should be Christmas Eve because that's when they express their love for one another. So it's just so beautiful. And they, I just love this book so much. I give this 4.5 stars. I mean, I would almost give it five, but you know, like I said, some of the stuff with Rafe was kind of annoying, but it was so good. It really was so good. The love theme for this, I would say, is one of my number one Christmas songs of all time. I find it to be so romantic and it's so perfect for Rafe and Hannah. 
Merry Christmas Darling by The Carpenters. And now I'm gonna go listen to that song. I'm actually a little bit sad that I'm done with the Wallflower series, but the good news is I'm gonna be starting with The Hathaways next week. I hope you'll join me. I hope you're doing well and that you're enjoying whatever it is that you are reading. Until next time, thanks so much, take care, and bye.